In this video, we're jumping in how to configure the real SimGear hardware to work with the TDS software and doing that through SPAD.next. Let's get into it. Here we are in the sim and just wanted to show how everything is working great. So far, we're on vectors departing. However, what we want to do is we want to be going next to Teflix. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go direct and we're going to activate that. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch into nav mode and with nav mode and GPS enabled, we're now going to follow that course all the way back to Tefli. So that's pretty cool. Obviously, just wanted to show that all of the buttons and knobs are working. We can get home. We can jump quickly to our map. We can jump to our flight plan. We can scroll up and down that flight plan. And by now having all the controls makes life a lot easier. So if we needed to go direct to Vivax, we could select Vivax, hit direct, and activate direct to Vivax. And we've now got our plane following along on that magenta line. All right, let's go into how we figured out mapping all of the buttons to get it with the TDS software. We go into the documentation and documentation is pretty good. Unfortunately, it does not list the commands uh, that they use. So then we headed over to the forum uh, and button mapping to the GTN. Well, they mention, yeah, Real Sim Gear. They have a video, got it working. Uh, nothing else and of course a minute ago I dropped uh, why didn't you update the documentation with the command list so we have to do a little snooping around and we go find a command mapping uh, that was used by RSG to implement it and lo and behold um, this looks a lot like the mappings that uh, Reality XP uses. Gonna go ahead and use that. 750 number one. We're gonna start off by controlling at event. We need to do tuner, inner, clockwise. We're gonna look for the old sim events. GPS. And we want the GPS page knob uh, increase. We need to keep the parameter value as zero. I'm going to click OK. Because this is all the bit stuff, the bit masking they do. Add event, tuner, inner, counterclockwise, add action, send simulation event, knob decrease, page knob, page knob. Click OK, parameter OK. Now we want to do the outer knob. Tuner, outer, clockwise. And these are going to be the group knobs. GPS group knob increase. Also using parameter 0. event uh, FMS button right so we need a button pressed at action so FMS button pressed is the cursor button so send simulation event and we want the GPS cursor button uh, GPS cursor button but we want parameter 2 uh, because the software will interpret 2 
has pushed and four as the release. And then those numbers increase. Um, you use like eights, tens, and twelves uh, for the second GPS instant if you've got a COM2 GPS. So like a 650 running as the secondary unit. Um, but that means we need a button released command. Send simulation, cursor button. And here we're going to use cursor button and command four. All right, so we got our FMS knob set up. Uh, we've got the direct to button. And of course, the bezel isn't the NXI bezel, so the home button uh, that's up here is now down here, but whatever. This is what the RSG unit is and good enough. We're gonna add an event. And for the direct to, uh, similar type thing. We got direct to button uh, and we're going to have a number two, then a number four. So button pressed, add action, send simulation event. There it is. Menu button. GPS menu button. We want a parameter two. Add event. Button released. Add action. Send simulation event. Menu button. We want four. Uh, and again, that's going to allow the software to process button down, button up, which is pretty cool. Um, so up here, this is going to be the... I put the menu button in the wrong place. That's the direct to. So let's copy all events. Go up here. Let's paste them. Let's come back down here. And let's edit the menu button uh, because that should have been the direct to button but we keep the parameter values all the same so the way reality xp explained it in their documentation is a zero is a press and release for uh, COM1. And then two is a press down or a button down on COM1. Four is a button up on COM1. We've got the volume knob. Encoder volume uh, up is GPS button two. So encoder... Volume up, GPS button two. All right, GPS button two, but I'm supposed to give it a four. And then we're gonna add an event, counterclockwise, add action, send simulation event, button two, add a two. And then we're going to add an event for the button itself, pressed, add action, send simulation event, button one, number two. So button one, number two, add event, button released, add action, send simulation event, uh, button one, uh, number four. Now the question is, does it now work? Oh, would you look at that? So there's our range knob. Uh, there we are changing pages, map page, flight plan, traffic, terrain. Uh, that is pretty serious XM. Okay, XM, sure. Uh, that is, that's pretty awesome. And it works really well. It's smooth. Uh, there is our direct two. Hold for map. Oh, works exactly like it's supposed to. So no matter where you are, hold for map. And it bounces out. Now, of course, the problem is, is that uh, because of the NXI, 
which is actually expecting that button to be down at the bottom of the page now. Uh, you'll see that that, um, that cursor information shows up down where now the direct to is, but whatever. It's different. Um, our volume. Well, would you look at that volume uh, working exactly how it's supposed to. That's pretty cool. And of course, then we get to our squelch. And it does exactly what it's supposed to do. Hold for calm swap. Look at that. Hold. Boom. You get the calm swap. So yeah, I would, uh, I'd, I am totally impressed by that. Click on it, your knobs, uh, let you dial in the frequencies. Uh, let's go, with one, uh, you know, where are we? Carp, so 122.8, spacing works, enter. It's in there, boom, swap. Now mind you, we had to do a little bit of snooping. We had to find the command set via the RSG software, uh, but hey, we've got it, it's running, it's working. So let's go ahead and we will publish this. Microsoft Flight Sim TDS 750 NXI uh, for the RSG 750 mapping. So if you just wanna download the mapping, uh, away you go. Uh, but there you go. That's how you map the RSG and how you map the RSG to the TDS 750. It's all working, it's running, it's on the display, and it's consuming no SIM uh, resources. So that's it, we're done. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and come with us next time. Thanks for watching, have a great day.